The University of Alberta respectfully acknowledges that we are situated on Treaty 6 territory, traditional lands of First Nations and Métis people. Excuse me, um, should we, um, should we go? Excuse me? Oh, no, no, I just mean if we're on someone else's land, shouldn't we, shouldn't we leave? Territorial acknowledgements have become an important, everyday act towards recognizing Indigenous peoples' histories and contemporary realities. But have they become so commonplace that we've forgotten what they stand for? I'm so sorry, I, I'm so confused. So who's, whose land are we on? What, what, are we, what are we doing? It's a dialogue. Um, How are we making right? Well, there's a, uh, there's, there's a plaque you can read in the lobby. In this video, we'll hear from faculty and staff about the importance of acknowledging territory and how to create an acknowledgement that is personal, authentic, and continually committed to reconciliation. So why is it important to acknowledge territory? Before European settlers came to Meskwichiwa Sky Gun, there were many Indigenous nations living and thriving in these lands. Amiskwichi means Beaver Hills in Nehewin, or Cree. The name for Edmonton, Amiskwichi with Sky Gun, means Beaver Hills House. Kisasachuan CP is a Nehewin, or Cree word, for the North Saskatchewan River. It means swift, flowing river. Our institution and other higher education institutions are contested spaces, especially for Indigenous peoples due to a long history of educational policies that were not friendly towards Indigenous peoples, their points of view, their cultures and languages. It is important for me to acknowledge the land and so I am able to continue to develop my knowledge of Indigenous peoples' histories, educational experiences and knowledge systems, their ways of knowing and being. Some worry that the territorial acknowledgement is just words at the beginning of a semester. Um, but as a literature professor, I have a lot of faith in words and what they do. Creating your own territorial acknowledgement. Tip one, make it relevant. Tie your acknowledgement to the reason you are gathered. Bring it out of abstraction and make it concrete. Um, whenever possible, I like to take students outside to acknowledge territory. Um, I think that when we're inside a classroom, it's very easy to forget where we are. Um, and outside, you can really think about what it means to be here. We also wanted to recognize the copyright, which is the topic of our presentation and uh, our instructional videos, is a Western concept and it is hugely incompatible um, with uh, Indigenous knowledges um, and cultural expressions. So we wanted to recognize that and uh, share our hope that by contributing to copyright education, we can help reveal some of those issues in the future. Tip two, research and engage with the histories and Indigenous peoples of the places you live and visit. Knowing what words mean when you include that in your land acknowledgement, um, whether that be an elder or knowledge keeper, um, someone who may have um, taught it, um, someone who is living it. So perhaps an Indigenous person or a Métis or an Inuit person who can say to them, here's why including the word Inuit is important to me. Here's why including the word Métis is important. What do these words mean? Tip three, ask yourself, what does it mean to live, work, and play on Treaty 6 territory. We are supported by Indigenous educators, faculty members, and elders. It is important for me to acknowledge this as I am continually learning and working on the land, the Treaty 6 in which I inhabit. Acknowledging Treaty and Indigenous territory is important to me and I think it is also for both Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. For me, as a descendant of settlers, I'm here because of treaty. We are all treaty people. We all have responsibilities in relationship to the people and the land. What are yours? Tip four, ask yourself, what does it mean to live, 
work, and play on the Métis homelands. Alberta is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta and eight Métis settlements. These Alberta Métis settlements are the only government-recognized Métis land base in Canada. Métis people have their own unique history, language, and culture. Métis people should not be considered a mix of Indigenous and non-Indigenous ancestry. Métis peoplehood is politically and relationally connected to Red River, Manitoba. The Métis homeland spans prairie and parkland areas of what is now called Western Canada and the Northern United States. Also, the Métis are an Indigenous nation in peoplehood relations with other nations, human, and more than humans thinking about my identity as, as a midship woman, what does that mean to me? What are my, those, those connections of my mother, my grandmother, uh, her mother, those, I, I consider those intergenerational connections and those women, those matriarchal women who came before me. So I think that's a piece to think about is, again, where's your own connectivity? So not just saying Métis and not knowing the history of what it means to identify as Métis, what history comes behind that identity. In Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin Wall Kimmerer says, Children, language, lands, almost everything was stripped away, stolen when you weren't looking because you were trying to stay alive. In the face of such loss, one thing our people could not surrender was the meaning of land. In the settler mind, land was property, real estate, capital, or natural resources. But to our people, it was everything. Identity, the connection to our ancestors, the home of our non-human kinfolk, our pharmacy, our library, the source of all that sustained us. Our lands were where our responsibility to the world was enacted. Sacred ground. It belonged to itself. It was a gift not a commodity, so it can never be bought or sold. We don't own anybody, and the same way we don't own the land, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are part of its legacy for that moment, and somebody else will come behind us and be a part of its legacy in new ways on the same piece of land. And so you don't own it. You just have the blessing of living alongside that piece of land or the land we reside in for a season, right? And that season is our lifetime, or it might just be a day. What impact are you making um, in the time that you spend on that land and in that space? Tip five, ask yourself, why is it important to honor the gifts of the land? What are the gifts of this land? How do those gifts feed my spirit? How do they feed my, my own family? How do they feed what I do here? And then what's my responsibility to gift back? Territorial acknowledgements should reflect relational accountability to the Indigenous peoples and places around you. Relational accountability means relationships are built upon reciprocity, where you give more than you take. So it's about how to be a, a good relative and to each other and to the land. And big, I think, important piece is to examine and to look back about what what is our story? What is our own story? Whether you're a settler, whether you're come from another country, whether your relations are here, regardless. As a newcomer to Canada who doesn't necessarily share the same uh, history as many Canadians, but whose background is mostly white, um, it, I feel that I'm also a settler in these lands. And using a territorial acknowledgement is a way of acknowledging that reality and positionality. And the territorial acknowledgement is a reminder of the responsibilities that I carry into the classroom um, as a settler. Um, it's a reminder too to continue to learn about those responsibilities as, even as I learn about all kinds of other things um, living and working here. Tip six, ask yourself, what is my own story in relation to Indigenous peoples and the place in which I am giving the land acknowledgement? How is my work positively impacting the lives of Indigenous peoples? Mm -hmm.
No matter how detailed and considerate a territorial acknowledgement spoken in a settler space is, it can never be more than a move to innocence if it is not combined with concrete actions embedded in relationships of solidarity. Whose land are we on? What, what are we? What are we doing? It's a dialogue. Um, How are we making right? You don't just don't need acknowledgement, and and then it's done. You know, it's it's a way of of living. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of of being in relationship, and and it's a learning. Tip seven: Committing to authenticity is essential to avoid becoming a mere performance of reconciliation. The University of Alberta respectfully acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. We acknowledge the ancestors, the medicines, the languages, and the teachings of these lands that continue to nourish our spirits and positively impact our lives. It is in reciprocal relationships with Indigenous peoples that the work we do is possible. We are able to live, work, and play on Treaty 6 territory and the Métis homelands because of the generosity of Indigenous nations. We seek to always uncover the truth and to ensure that Indigenous ways of knowing, being, and doing are at the forefront of our work. In summary, acknowledging territory must be more than a performance. Tie your acknowledgement to the reason you are gathered. Learn the histories and contemporary realities of Indigenous peoples and place. Reflect on your responsibilities to Indigenous peoples and place. Put your words into action. And finally, build meaningful, authentic, and reciprocal relationships with Indigenous peoples.